Alright, hello and welcome back. I'm going to try more of this with the GoPro because the big camera's getting cumbersome. Uh, it's probably only been a minute since I've last talked to you, but it's been days since I last recorded anything. Uh, I thought I'd bring an update, show you where we're at, show you some of the plans I've made and some of the accommodations for those plans and how we're continuing. Hi, me from the future editing this video. Uh, it turns out oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff I failed to record after that little electrical mishap that we saw in the last video. So here is our hot water tanks as they sit now. They have been heated and cooled both by coolant with the Wabasto running uh, and by the electric 120. Uh, I don't see any leaks. Everything seems to be sealed up nicely. Uh, the drain solenoid works on the switch inside. Everything is routed as it should be. Uh, as far as hot water goes, I am very happy. So what's missing from the explanations here is that because these two water heaters are heated from engine coolant, uh, there is a very good possibility that that engine coolant will reach 200 plus degrees, 210 plus degrees on a hot day if we're working the bus hard. Uh, if that temperature is sustained, that coolant that's running through the hot water tanks will heat the hot water to that temperature, uh, and that will then cause the blow-off valves to eject that excess hot water. In and of itself, it's not a problem, but excessively heating those hot water tanks repeatedly is not good for them, in my opinion. So what we've done to combat that is we've added a temperature controlled solenoid into the coolant loop that runs through the back of the hot water tanks. Uh, there's a little thermostat that we've JB welded to the front of the tank. What we've done is here. So that's the uh, thermostat that I found at one of the surplus RV shops, but it's any hot water tank thermostat that's 12 volts. Um, and so this particular one has actually got two thermostats on it. This one is a resettable one, um, but I've jumpered over that. This blue wire here connects to the other side up there. So the power comes in here. This one opens at 140 and then closes again at 120. Uh, so as we go up in temperature, when we hit our maximum, it opens and the circuit opens and it goes, okay, we need no more hot water. And then when it drops below 120, the circuit closes again uh, and it energizes. So, and then this is for the Wabasto. So this top unit here is for the Wabasto. Uh, I hope that, I hope that, did that make sense? I hope this makes sense. Uh, and then I've done the same exact thing down here with the same stuck on thermostat just like that wired exactly the same except that its wires here its wires here go and they run up into the kitchen we are at the kitchen table kitchen sink here you can see up there uh, we are underneath <laughs> there's oreo watching patiently to see what's happening so here is what I have installed inside the kitchen cabinet. Uh, I've added the two relays there, one Keon, one Wabasto. Uh, they both control the same solenoid from the same signal. We've got 12 volts coming from the freezer circuit, uh, patched underneath the coach in the main junction box for DC power. So the thing we need now in the kitchen is 12 volts when we 12 volts to power the solenoid so we want something on a relay or a breaker uh, something a good constant 12 volt source that's 12 volt switch related not key related uh, and then we also want a key 12 volts so that we can control the solenoid relay when we're driving so we come down here and we bust out our branch circuit identification notes and we start going through pages and pages of what every wire goes to, what they're called, what they're for. Uh, and we get to see our box here with all our fittings and our junctions. And so right over here, right here, 
we have 12 volts for the freezer. Now the freezer has been long since removed and it's now been replaced by a uh, toolbox. So we're gonna take that 12 volts, the outlet's still in the back of the bay but it's not hooked up to anything. So we're gonna take 12 volts, we're gonna tap in there. We're gonna run it over here. Uh, this is the loom that goes up to the galley. So this is the one that's gonna we're gonna find underneath the kitchen cabinets. And you can see we've got at least two empties there. There's a couple more here. I don't know. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. This is the terminal strip and the cable that goes up to the galley. Uh, we have two empty slots here that we can use. All the rest are accounted for and, uh, and routed. So we're going to put 12 volts constant when the 12 volt switch is on. Uh, and then we're going to put 12 volt keyed up here, or maybe vice versa, I haven't decided yet. Um, so that we can get a 12 volt keyed source up there as well to trigger the driving relay for the solenoid to be open and monitoring its own temperature. And it'll have its own thermometer temperature thermostat in that loop. That's a lot of talking. I wonder how much of this will ever show up. It's funny, as I as I sit here recording this by myself in the front yard, uh, none of this has ever been uploaded yet. So I, I'm talking to you guys as though you're there watching this, but nobody has seen anything yet. I don't know if you'll ever see this. Uh, if you do see this, interesting, let me know what you think. Uh, and and I, hope, uh, I hope my content is interesting. And so we, as I showed before, we've run up a constant 12 volts here and we've run up a key on 12 volts here we're just gonna use that one for signal and then this one right here is power to the rear thermostat so we're gonna use that one to control the Wabasto relay so when we turn the Wabasto on this uh, thermostat will get power and that will open this relay and this relay will allow the solenoid in the coolant system to open and flow coolant whenever the Wabasto is on coolants flowing uh, this one, key on, is thermostatically controlled. So there's a 140 volt thermostat in line with this key on signal. So we get power to the 12 volts here, it goes down through the thermostat, comes back up to the relay, and then out to ground. So as long as the thermostat is closed, we will have key on power opening the solenoid. When the thermostat on the water tank has reached 140 degrees, it'll open that circuit and the thermostat will close and we should not ever explode our hot water tank. Yay! So we can then tell that solenoid to close if the temperature inside the tanks exceeds 140 degrees. Uh, it's the same way you would control any other hot water tank. There's just a little thermo disc uh, that opens and closes at the right temperature um, and we just run 12 volts through that and if it's closed it energizes the solenoid and the solenoid's open and if it breaks if it goes open when it reaches 140 degrees then it closes the solenoid and the solenoid stops allowing the hot coolant to run around the hot water tank eventually the hot water tanks will cool off um, although it does take quite a long time there's a lot of thermal mass there uh, but if they eventually cool off and then the solenoid will reopen and then we'll allow the coolant to run back through the system. Okay. Does that help explain what's happening? We, yeah. Let's go outside and maybe I can explain it there. Back trusty helper. Are you watching the door? So it is November 20th now. It is very cold outside. Uh, you can see we've just got trace amounts of snow, but I'm guessing the snow is going to come back soon and it's going to get very cold. Anyway, let's have a look in here. Uh, okay, so we now have exposed hot water tanks again. So there's a couple of things I wanted to point out. One, here's the solution I went with for our blow-off. I found these flexible stainless braided 
uh, water hoses it's half inch on this end it's three eighths I think on this end three eighths compression uh, so I went three eighths compression to PEX 90 and just put PEXs down through the bottom so I did that on both sides I think that looks really clean uh, I really like that solution I'm really happy with that you can see I've added some foam here onto the hot water lines I have more for up there uh, this is for the air tank purge switch right there uh, otherwise yeah this all seems okay everything looks sealed up I don't have any water leaks anywhere I think that's old um, uh, that little hole there is very small and very dark so I'm going to Here's what I'm going to do for you guys. We're going to go video and we're going to turn on the flash. All right. So, hi, hi, okay, hi, hi, hi. And then we're going to hit record. There we go. Hi, hi. And we're going to extend this out. There we go. And now I'm going to send you guys in there and hopefully we can get some good footage. So that should be the solenoid right there. Uh, you can see I built a little block for it, right? And it just breaks. That's the coolant line right there. Right, so we come from coolant and then we swap it. And so up here, and then also you can see over there is the tank. We had to swap out the blue pressure tank for that white tank, uh, which worked quite nicely. Okay, and we're gonna come back and we'll stop recording. All right. That's better, I think. I think that's a more, a more better YouTuber friendly video. Let's see what you guys think. Okay. What is this?